what is my own personal experiences <coughs> regarding awakening, enlightenment, or whatever? Well, you know, it's very difficult for me to explain this because I can't find the person, you see. Personal experiences mean there has to be a person now to explain them. I can remember the person. I can remember what I was. And there's no significant change in the body. No significant change in anything. For a period of five years, my family thought I had dementia or Alzheimer's. Because the person, when it was distinguished, something had to come back. Something had to return within the body, you see? Because the body is always here. When one talks about um, dying before you die, or suicide, it means the, the death of your identity, which is a version of mind. There's only a version of mind that dies. Total mind cannot die. Without mind, we're not having this video. We're not doing this. No one is living. Mind is an essential part of this life. Without mind, I can't do this. You see? So, <clears throat> what I can say is, I was fully depressed, completely disillusioned, totally suicidal, feeling completely rejected. I was at my wit's end. Everyone hated me, but the most important thing the most important thing of all this was that I, at no point in my life before, and this was I was aged 51, I don't know, 51, when these rejections, this depression started to really kick in. But at no point before reaching 51 did I ever seem to recognize who I was. I never felt like I was this body. I never felt that the person that I was, what I completely thought I was a person, belonged inside this body. Now that's the initial thinking, you see. But it was, an, it was a real recognition. And when I looked in the mirror, I didn't know who I was. So I had a real starting point. But what you realize once all this is by, and I can only speak for myself in this, the truth, is that every single one of us, our lives, is completely planned. It's like you've been sat down in front of someone before your first appearance in a body and said, right, you're going to have to experience everything before we can allow you to return. And this is actual reality. I believe, I, believe, I, I know this more than I knew myself in the body. So when it, the aftermath of awakening and enlightenment comes to the ground, there is a realization that, yes, if someone had said that to the person beforehand, I'd have said, bullshit. Because there was no knowing there. There was only belief and questions. Everything was planned. 
So the recognition or the non-recognition of who I was in the mirror was really the tail end of coming home. So for some watching, maybe if you've had experiences of, and some, you may call them insights. But you don't know their insights till after the awakening, you see? It's like you're walking around in a sleep. That's why they call it awakening. But you think you're real. You think everything is going. Your beliefs are the same as everything else. Your mind is the same as everything else. You want to improve. You want to get better. You want money. You want your family to be healthy. You want you to live as long as you possibly can and do as much as you can within your life. And then afterwards you realize that's why it's called realization you realize wow how many lives did I waste but at the same time it doesn't matter because you also know that whatever many lives you lived they only last one moment not a time moment but they only last one moment. It is very easy to see that past has never happened. But when I was a person, you would attach to the past, cling on to the past. I need the past. I have to take this past with me. I have to carry it in bags, everything. And then in the future, I'll get some more luggage. And then when I go to the Day of Judgment, you see all belief systems, all belief systems from Bibles, from books, from parents, from education. And do I say, I wish I ignored it? Absolutely not. Because they're all part of this initial test that either you gave yourself or some God figure gave it to you. Because another thing, a secondary thing that comes, many things comes, whole knowledge comes to you not the knowledge that you know of the mind not the knowledge about how to do things how to improve things how to create things how to design things this knowledge is far far I wouldn't say superior it's completely more realistic and you see I completely forgot what I was going to say now mind is very very vague Sometimes it can help you. Well, when you're awake, every time it helps you. So when you forget what you're going to say, it is meant to be. And it'll come back in time. So, what is my experiences? Well, what I know is that whatever I say today will change tomorrow. Just like the sun may come out today, it may not come out tomorrow. Even enlightenment has variations. Even if you saw God, if there was a God and you saw him today, tomorrow he would be completely different. And we're not talking about his hair. Or his beard we're talking about whatever it is his whole ethos his whole essence would be completely different there's nothing permanent when you're in a human body you know that permanence exists you know that stability exists one of the things that was revealed to me was that this voice said I am the maple now I don't know what this means maple means stability but I am also the consciousness of the horses or the ribbons that dance around these things. So I am two things, hence duality. My birthday was April the 30th, two hours before May the 1st, Beltane, I think they call it, the, ba the maple dance. So I don't know if there's a significance here. I don't know. And when you're awakened and enlightened, you don't investigate. Because it's the mind that's investigating. Whatever the words that came said, 
<coughs> they will reveal what it means when they are ready to reveal what it means. When you try and discover, you're just encroaching on nature. The result, I've never felt so much peace, so much stability, so much presence. There's no way the mind can take you on, it can take you to tomorrow. It can say maybe you should go for a haircut tomorrow. But when someone says, let's book your holidays for next year, phew, I don't know how to do that. That is not important. Important is now. You completely understand, all oh, fellow saints and gurus, Eckhart Tolle, and the power of now. Ramana Maharshi and his Who Am I? And you relate so much to the eyes. You cannot say, I love them, I am devoted to them, they are my master. You cannot say that to anyone, but you cannot say anyone is lower than you, or higher than you. There's no one here speaking, there's no one here listening. Yuji Krishnamurti finished me off. He completely finished me off. Because of many of the seeings were very similar to fellow gurus, saints, sages, whatever. But he confirmed this explosion. Because my awakening the awakening this body experienced was an explosion. Where I left the body, or the body left me. It matters not. There was a separation, but there was no separation. There was a stretching. That's what out of body means. You cannot disconnect from your body. If you disconnect from your body, you will never return to this body. But again, I don't know if the person who dwelled in this body before this out-of-body experience is the same person that's in it now. Of course you have the same name. Everyone tells you the same name. Of course you recognize your house. There was a time amidst all this When I stayed at my son's, we were babysitting their home while they went on holidays. And the whole week, I lay in bed, not ill, I just couldn't move. I just felt so much joy and bliss. No one knew it. My wife was at work, and I lay in bed. And I just disappeared slowly. And when it was time to go home, I came and drove up. And I didn't recognize my house. It was like I'd seen it for the first time. But it wasn't the house that had changed. It was the person or the spirit or the being or what had happened or whatever was removed, removed this association with this house. And then that following week, on YouTube, my master, who I would say was my true master, who I had a real association with, but not association, a real deep, deep, deep connection, Muji, said, 
when he was describing his awakening, there was some point in his life when he came home and he never recognised his house. Everything is confirmed. It's like you realise that all your life has been planned by yourself. And at the other end of the scale you realise that something will confirm this life that you planned. And the third realisation is that everything you did in your life or lies was a reflection of the plan of the life. So every time you do something in this world, in this body, it is confirming your original plan. But it's so big for the mind to understand. It's so massive for a mind to understand. I can say five years of bliss. Absolute bliss. And now, peace. When you say bliss, so much joy. You're bursting with love. Bursting with joy. And the great thing about my own personal awakening is that I was so depressed so you were at one end of the scale completely suicidal completely depressed completely ready to burst completely full full of bullshit your whole life had been building up like a balloon being pumped up inhaled exhaled or whatever it is called ready to burst and so when it burst my god one big burst, not a very slow letting out the gas, the air. So the change from this to that was immense, immense love. Since my awakening, I've been making videos to myself. Why? Because part of the seeing was to say, it's not about you on a stage. It's not about you helping others. It's not about you. You see? My ego was so much destroyed that pure mind was not going to allow it back in. This is as far as the ego goes, these videos. This is as far as I can go at this moment in time. Tomorrow it could change. Tomorrow I could be on a big stage. I don't know. I don't know anything. Because there's no one really here to know. There is just this moment. This moment is non-ending. You see, this moment is going on. It's moment, moment, moment. We think of it as a time moment, a second. One moment, two, no, it's one, it's one infinite stretching moment. What I see is that I see the ego, the mind that used to be, used to dwell in this body. I can see it. And it had preferences. It had preferences. Some of the revelations about the science side behind it, how consciousness works, how the planets work, how the system, the cosmos works, was all revealed. But science will not be interested in this because it's just a person, a mind's, to them, interpretation. I haven't got any certificates behind science. And anyway, I'm not really interested. What was revealed was truly, truly inspirational and exciting. And science may never find it. But then again, they may well. I don't know.
But I know that this ego mind, when I see happiness, what happiness we used to call happiness in our conditioned mindset, and when I see sadness, I am not happiness, and I am not seeking happiness. I am not sadness, and I am not seeking sadness. It's like a triangle. Happiness and sadness at two points, and this point, you. You can go and experience happiness, and you can go and experience sadness. And the triangle's never broken. So you're always this pure consciousness. But initially, your true nature is this point. You're only experiencing happiness. You're only experiencing sadness. You're only experiencing pleasure, pain, opposites. And these opposites are the same. Everything is the same. Everything is the same vibration, the same energy, the same point. What was revealed, I can only say, because it is very difficult to speak about your ultimate seeing. But I was taken, something was taken to the beginning. The beginning. Now I don't know if this beginning, because I cannot speak about it, it's far, it, it really, cannot say if it's my beginning, this soul, this world, because I'm not just a being, a human, I am my world, not your world, not your world, and not your world, I am my world, I am my complete world, whatever I see I am, I don't know if it's the beginning of my world, or if it was the beginning of all worlds, and we all come from this same beginning. I think Rumi spoke about it. And again, each one of us will have some sort of purpose beyond this initial purpose. Rumi was love, poetry. What I was given was this maple, stability. That's why I speak in the middle. It's more of a Buddha nature than a Rumi nature. But Rumi was also shown this beginning. So this Buddha nature means always in the middle. Everything is valid. Pain, pleasure, valid. When they're balanced. When you're not seeking for either. Or if you are seeking, you're seeking for both. Your life will be completely peaceful. And happy. You will be very stable in this ever-changing, moving world. Consciousness is all that is moving. Consciousness moves. It's a substance or a quality which we will never ever experience. That's why science will struggle. To experience consciousness, you have to go with it. Consciousness is moving, and it moves through your one moment animated life, lives. And each time this air, or this quality, moves over your animated strip, like the puppet on the stage, start moving. Your heart starts beating, your breath starts breathing. And when this consciousness stops moving on your animated strip, we call this death. But your animated strip is always here. It can be, consciousness can change directions. You can live this life again, backwards next time, as aliens, whatever. There's no end. That is one thing that is completely revealed. And all saints and gurus speak about this. There's no ending. There is no ending. There will never be an ending. This world, this earth, may not be here in 120 years. Or the human race may not be on it in 120 years. But we will still evolve as some sort of forms. 
when we choose, when we create our new circle of life. The circle of life is what it is. When you set out your test, you never leave the test room. You never leave the room where the test is written out. But you create a body that leaves and you watch this body from the test room and you call it home when the circle is finished, when all experiences have been complete. Many Indian gurus speak about completion and this is what it is. When you fully enlighten and you fully know, you realize that you will no longer come back as a human. And is this a sad? No, because what is left is new. Circle of life means the longer it goes on, not the older and the faded and the more weak you get. It means you return to what you were before you left. Beyond mind, beyond life, beyond consciousness. Back to the beginning. No ending. You see? And maybe that's a good way to end this. Because I feel I've said enough. There are five years of insights, revelations, experiences, out of body. Jesus experiences 40 days, 40 nights in the forest, sitting, watching tree, a tree for weeks, disappearing, everything coming and going, disappearing, 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 stripping off, scraping back, till this body is burnt completely, given. Presented to the one. I've had enough. And he says, good. Because I'm coming home. And now, I'm home. I'm still a body, still the same name. My wife, my children, much more beautiful. They were amazing before. They were the love that ego made before, but now they're the love that God speaks. I cannot see a bad human being in this world. Because I'm not attached to this world. Whatever is happening in this world is happening for a reason. And when you get attached to grief, anger, hatred, happiness, on the triangle, two points, you may find yourself sticking at one of these points. And realization, awakening, enlightenment, enlightenment means, whoa, whoa, I am not this, as Ramana Maharshi says. I am not any of this. Any thoughts, any mind, any form, any world, but I am. You see? I can be both of these points. I am and I am not. But I'm still the witness. I'm still separate. I'm still the one part of this God, part of this existence, part of this whole mystery, even though I'm not. It's been a pleasure. It's been a revelation. And I love every single one of you. If anyone actually watches this, I hope it gives you some I don't hope anything, because I know every single one, every single human being is going to experience this. When? When is your circle of life up? You may be mid-circle. 
that you don't have to worry. Because even when you're suicidal, depressed, even when you're happy, even when your life is going great and you've won the lottery, you may be called home. Namaste, my friends. From Foxy. Thank you for listening.